So, hello everyone. Hope all of you are doing really well. This is Yonar and and uh, so hope all of you uh, already uh, saw the inspection and investigation uh, summary. And in case if you have uh, missed to watch it, do check it out. So this is in continuation to the sequence of uh, corporate law discussion. So now the topic is uh, appointment and remuneration of manager personnel. The main objective behind this video is. On exam day morning, many candidates they would have read all the questions, but uh, they will be searching for uh, notes or reference to quickly recall the numericals because numericals play a real role, be it in this current tone syllabus as well as in the coming attempts uh, self-paced exam modules as well. So with that objective, I'll be quickly briefing you a few things, and once you're done watching this, do parallelly cover the things that are not mentioned here as well i'll tell you the, those seconds also so pocket that and uh, invest two hours and ensure you don't lose a single mark on remuneration of management personnel so first one is let's focus on the purposes and uh, objectives what are the various benefits that is available to the key persons first one is children education allowance maximum up to 12000 per month per child maximum two kids is all this question was last, asked last time. What mistake can they make is if something is asked last time, most of them tend to miss the doubt in the next time. They don't prepare it. But this may be asked in uh, MCQs 2 marks this time. So ensure you don't miss those marks. The next one is in case of a written holiday passage, once a year in economic class is allowed. Or in case of first class, once in two years allowed. For children studying outside India, family residing outside India. So... <laughs> You, most of you would be aware of the board's report, what are the various disclosures. Board's report must contain a statement of top employees, the name of every employee who is employed through the year. I repeat, this is categorized into two parts. One is employed through the year and another is employed for part of the year. If any employee is employed for through the year, then receipt of remuneration exceeding 1.02 crores, the details of such employee should be disclosed in the board's report as part of a statement and in case of employment for part of the year a receipt of remuneration exceeding 8.5 lakhs should be disclosed and sitting fees what's maximum amount that can be paid to any director is rupees 1 lakh so next all important things that is a schedule fee section 197 so in case of effective capital and of manager remuneration and other directors so if the effective capital is negative or up to 5 crores then the easiest way, in case if you listen to earlier videos, you'll be aware of the shortcuts. That is, so in a year, a year consists of 12 months, so 5, the limit of effect capital is 5. So 12 into 5 is 60, and go to the next uh, table of 12, that is 12 into 2. So 60 plus 24, that is 84, then 84 plus 12 into 3 is 36, that is 120. And for 250 crores, it's 120 lakhs plus 0.01% exceeding 250 crores. This is the manager remuneration threshold up beyond which the special resolution and other approvals are required as per section 197 and 198. So what is meant by effective capital is aggregate of weight of share capital excluding revaluation reserve. Keep this in mind. Then aggre less aggregate of investments and after giving effect to preliminary expenses. So in case of uh, other directors, the threshold is 12 lakhs. Then if it's between 5 to 100 crores, I repeat 5 to 100 crores. So you increase the 12 by 5. So that will become 17. Then if the third slab is out, for example, the company's effective capital comes to 198 crores, then other directors can draw remuneration up to 24 lakhs. So lastly, it's 24 lakhs plus 0 0.01% exceeding 250 crores. So moving on to the next one. Very important frequently regularly tested. The overall limit for manager remuneration is 11%. If there is one one MD or WTDM manager, then 5% of net profits. If there are more than one, then 10%. And in case of remuneration to directors who are neither MD or old time directors, if the company has any MD or WTD present in the organization, then 1% of net profits. If there are no managing director or holding director, then up to 3% of net profits may be given as remuneration to directors who are neither a managing director 
or an or an old time director. So as I told in the beginning, you should do both section two or two. That is, I mean, uh, compensation for your loss of office. So up to three years of the duration on which is in organization, whichever is short up. These are the things, and in case any excess remuneration is drawn within two years, that person should be should refund the amount. The it is a rule of company secretary or other persons in charge to ensure the amount has been refunded. And in case of return of allotment within 90 days, the return of allotment should be filed. So that's with regard to the managing remuneration discussion. See if you. Focus carefully. We took nearly seven to ten minutes, which is really an excellent timeline for this because this is one of the trickiest topics. But I was able to summarize it. So if you sit and dedicate time, you can master the subject easily. So best wishes and uh, do subscribe and uh, do reach out for more such useful insights. All the very best and best wishes.